I think there's so much pressure around New Year's and around everybody having their life perfectly aligned and like everything perfectly organized and having all of your goals and every month for the year perfectly planned out before January 1st. But that is so absurd and unrealistic. No matter what point in the year you do it, it is still going to be adding value to your life. Welcome back to my channel. Sorry for my not very put together appearance um, Normally when I film like sit down videos and stuff I like to do my makeup and everything and put on a nice outfit But I was already filming another video and I'm just like cozy right now And so I was like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it like this. It's like 10 p.m There's no point in me putting on makeup right now. So this is gonna be a very chill video Let me just say I'm so aware that it's like halfway through January However, I really think it's important that I'm still making this video because I'm excited to film it. I'm excited about the template and I think it turned out well. And just because it's further into January than I would like it to be, doesn't suddenly mean that I am not allowed to post this video and to do this. And like, I was just beating myself up for it. But after a while of doing that, I realized like that there was literally no point to that. Doing this reset, making this template, making my vision board, all of that, it still holds just as much value and purpose as it would if I posted this before January 1st. So I just kind of realized that and I was like, film the video anyways. Like it doesn't really matter when it is. I think there's so much pressure around New Year's and around everybody having their life perfectly aligned and like everything perfectly organized and having all of your goals and every month for the year perfectly planned out before January 1st. But that is so absurd and unrealistic, especially because if you think about the holiday season, people are eating a bunch of food, drinking more than they normally would. They're spending time with family, which can be draining in itself. You know, just taking a break from work and everything, maybe sleeping in, getting out of their routines. Like people are just not on the grind in December. So why would we expect that January 1st, everything is supposed to be perfect? Like what is more realistic is that December and January are months of rest and of like slowly getting back into the groove of things. So I was just kind of thinking about that and I realized like it is absurd, the expectation that everything needs to be done by January 1st. So anyways, with all that said, that's why I'm still posting this 2024 reset goal intention setting thing way past January 1st. And if you're somebody who already has your goals and intentions and everything like that set out, I'm very proud of you. Good for you. Um, we are not in that same boat though. And if you're somebody who is like me and who's a little bit late on this stuff, know that it is okay. And like I just said, it doesn't make it any less valuable to be doing this, to be setting your goals and intentions. No matter what point in the year you do it, it is still going to be adding value to your life and like adding clarity for the direction you wanna go in, you know? So yeah, with all that said, Let's get into the actual video. And also, if you're interested, this is a later part in the 2024 reset series I've been doing. So that playlist is gonna be linked down below if you're interested. But also, if not, you can just keep watching. Okay, so here is the home screen for my 2024 visions and everything. I don't know if you can tell, but I put a lot of time and energy into this. I even went on Canva and everything and like made this banner thing. You know, we got the healthy eating, skincare, gym, financial abundance, self-care, all that. I just wanted this to like reflect, you know, the overall vibe of the year. And yeah, I also made these three little things on Canva to just have it be a little bit more, you know, aesthetic to divide up the three parts of the template. Um, I have done this for like three years now where I do like three different sections in my annual reflection reset and everything where I first like reflect on the previous year and then I reset and the reset is everything that I'm kind of like doing in these videos like the decluttering, the self care, you know, just kind of getting yourself in a good place for the new year and then the manifest part. That's the exciting part. That's the vision board. That's the goals all the good intentions. So yeah, that's what these three sections are right here. And then I have this cute little quote here. You don't receive what you want, you receive who you are. It's very true, very, very true. And I have the time here, just mostly because I thought this was like a fun little widget. Also, if you're somebody who uses Notion and you haven't used widgets before, 
I'll link it down below as well, but there's two sites where you can get uh, these widgets for free. There's Indify and Widgetsmith? No. Okay, I don't remember what it's called, but I'll put it in the description. And then I have this year's theme, which is trust and patience. I don't remember what last year's theme was, if I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Actually, maybe that's something I should quickly do first. Let me just quickly show you my 2023. My 2023 reset thing was not as like, fully developed, so it's just like a bunch of words and random stuff. Okay, here we go. My theme for 2023 was release pressure, enter flow, and the theme of the year was kind of letting go of perfectionism, letting go of the pressures I put on myself, and honestly, I do feel like I achieved that at least at some level. I mean, 2023 was the year where I quit my first corporate job, and so I feel like that is definitely kind of like an extreme example of releasing pressure, entering flow, allowing myself to like go towards, you know, my gut instincts and everything instead of holding myself to this like super high perfect standard of what I'm supposed to be doing. So that was my theme for 2023. And I guess you could say I kind of did that. And in general, I got a lot, a lot better with my perfectionism. Just the fact that I'm posting videos on YouTube at all. And that started in like the latter half of 2023 for me. The fact that I'm posting videos to me shows me I've defeated at least some level of that perfectionism. So I'm very proud of myself for that. And so I feel like I can say that I accomplished at least part of my goal for 2023. So that's cool to see. Uh, but in terms of my tangible goals and everything, I definitely did not hit those <laughs> at all. Um, and I'm not beating myself up for that at all. Like, honestly, I didn't really take the proper action to do so. Like, my vision board literally is only on my computer. And so I looked at it maybe like 10 times throughout the whole year. And I never referred back to my annual goals and everything just because I didn't make the template super cute or anything also. So I wasn't inclined to refer to it. So in hindsight, I guess, why would I have expected to reach these goals when I'm not even like referring to them or reminding myself of my intentions? So yeah, anyways, for 2024, I am very proud of how much more effort I put into this annual reset. And I know for a fact that just based off of how cute it is, I'm going to be wanting to be looking at it more. Like I already have been looking at it way more. I've probably already looked at it just as many times as I looked at my 2023 one in general in the whole year. And so I know for a fact I'm gonna be referring back to this just because of the aesthetic. So anyways, yeah, I just wanted to like show you my 2023 one briefly. So yeah, the theme for last year was that like releasing pressure or enter flow thing. And then this year's theme is trust and patience. And I wrote a little blurb on it here. It says, there's no need to rush towards your goals and desires. They are already yours and they are coming to you at speed. Know that they are yours and trust that your order has been placed and will be received. Just like at a drive-through, you place the order and know you will get it. There's no sense in worrying if they will get it right. Just pull up to your dream life, girl. The end is a little bit cheesy and cringe, but I don't care. It makes me feel good, okay? Yeah, I've heard a few people that I follow talk about the whole idea of like law of attraction and manifestation, all that stuff in this analogy of like the drive-through where like a lot of us, when we have certain desires and stuff, we kind of like put this massive pressure on it where it's like, if I don't have this, I'm not gonna be happy in my life. And like, we're constantly worrying about it. And like, oh my God, am I gonna get this? Am I not? And like, we're just constantly like, grasping so strongly onto this concept of what we want in our life. And that vibe of desperation is not what attracts your desires to you, you know? And so the idea is that if you just trust and know that it will come to you and you're not worrying about it, then you are already gonna be in that frequency of assuming that it's coming to you. Therefore, it will more easily flow to you, if that makes sense. I guess that's more so the law of assumption than the law of attraction. Honestly, I don't really know too much about all this stuff. Maybe it's the same thing. But that's like the idea for that little blurb right there. So anyways, uh, then I put this little widget here, which shows the year, quarter, month, week, and day, like how much percentage of it is gone already. And the fact that 3% of the year is already gone is wild to me. I really think that this is also going to prompt me to work harder this year towards my goals because seeing just how quickly the year runs out is kind of wild like seeing it like actually laid out to me like this I've never had a widget like this in any of my notion things before and it really is like a reality check so I think this will be good for me and then I put this little playlist here this is like one of my favorite playlists that I've ever made it's called my high vibe playlist and basically it's a bunch of songs that just make me feel really good about myself and like I can do anything and like everything is gonna be okay and yeah it's just very good vibe so yeah that's my home page and I'm really proud of myself as well because I figured out how to do this like little quick links thing where like 
you know, normally I would go through to like the main page, reflect, and then I have like a few different sections here. But what I can also do is if I go to quick links and I click under reflect journaling exercise, it takes me right to my journaling exercise. It's the little things, guys, that, that bring joy in life, you know? So I'm really proud of myself for that. But yeah, here's my reflect page. I think it's pretty cute. Another quote, your life is a reflection of your thoughts. If you change your thinking, you change your life. Again, very true. Like literally, our thoughts become our actions and become our reality. It just makes sense. And then I have a bunch of these little journaling prompts here. What word or phrase would you use to define 2023? I wrote, stepping into my power, I realized I don't have to do what I feel like I should. I can follow my gut instead. That's like exactly what I just said was like kind of what I felt overall in 2023. And then I have the section of my favorite moments from 2023, what I accomplished in 2023, and then also why were you proud of yourself in 2023? And I feel like it's important to have these two separate questions, even though they're kind of the same of like, what did you accomplish? And then what were you proud of yourself for? Because the accomplishments part is more like the tangible things that I did in 2023. For me, the big things in 2023 were leaving my corporate job and pouring more energy into, you know, my YouTube channel and starting to make money for myself with all my side hustles and everything. Like that's the overarching thing that I feel I accomplished in 2023. So that's more of like the tangible accomplishments and everything. But then I have the second question, why were you proud of yourself? And I feel like it's important to have that because it also leaves room for like reflecting on kind of like things that feel smaller and maybe they're not as like tangible or like big accomplishments, but still things that you should acknowledge, you know, like more vague things maybe. So like for me, I wrote down that I worked on my perfectionism, that I kind of overcame enough of like my self-doubt to start putting content out there again, despite potential judgment, getting better at consistency. And again, like letting go of perfectionism, picking myself back up, even if I haven't done things perfectly, working up the courage to quit my job again. That's another theme. Yeah. So just like more general things that I was proud of myself for in 2023. And then these two questions I think are really important. What gave energy in 2023? So this is pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, a bunch of things like going to the gym, self-care, quality time with friends, hobbies, being present, music, inspirational content, creating content, just a bunch of things that make me feel nourished and a lot more energized. And then what drained energy? Bro, these are the same things I write down every single year, but I feel like it's very useful to have them reflected again in this reflection. Yeah, clubbing, drinking too much, that's a big one for me every year. I have never been a big clubbing girly. I've never been somebody who loves going out on nights out or anything like that. And yet I continue to do it, probably at least on some level because of peer pressure and everything. Not that my friends pressure me, but like the own my own pressures that I put on myself. That is something that I want less of in 2024. Doom scrolling, the times when I wasn't in my intuition and I allowed myself to be in a job and in a relationship that weren't right for me. Staying up late, eating junk food, being mean to myself, giving into others' criticism instead of listening to my gut. Again, these things have repeated themselves over years and years, but... I feel like it's important to reflect on them once again. The last question I have is how did I grow in 2023? What lessons did I learn? So these are like the overarching themes, I guess you could say of the year and what I learned. This is like a big blurb, but just to briefly summarize, I learned how to see myself as a beautiful, powerful woman, not just a girl, not just a silly little girl, but a powerful person. Also beginning to learn how to accept and embrace my potential instead of downplaying it. like. An example of this is like I do pet portraits as a part of my income and I have severely undercharged for most of my time doing it and I'm slowly learning how to charge the amount that I should be earning. I also just recently increased my prices for my dog walking clients. I was also severely undercharging because I just feel bad to be charging people money for the services I'm providing at all, let alone charging them what I actually should be earning. So like slowly learning how to do that and I definitely got better at that in 2023. This also kind of leads into the next point where I talked about standing in your power, getting better at not taking shit from other people, and that theme again of trusting your intuition, learning how to respect myself before anything else. All of this is kind of like the same overarching theme of just trusting my own gut, trusting my intuition, respecting myself, putting myself first, valuing myself. All of this stuff is like the overarching theme that I feel like I really worked on in 2023, and I'm very proud of myself for that. This is why I think this part is so important in the reflection thing, is to just like feel that sense of being proud of yourself and accomplishing yourself, even if you didn't have like an objectively, like tangibly 
successful year or whatever to show yourself that you still learned things and grew as a person I think is really important and then again I read about perfectionism and about just doing things instead of being so scared of judgment a big one as well was I finally accepted that I don't want a traditional life like I don't want a traditional job I want a creative job I want to work for myself long term I want to be doing freelancing I finally accepted that and I felt really guilty about that for a very long time so that was a huge step in 2023 as well overall a very transformative year but yeah so that summarizes the journaling exercise part of this and then I put these cute little pictures and then I have this big section which is the life categories review which is basically like separating it into like money, finances, career, health, hobbies, family, friends, romance, spirituality, mental health, a bunch of stuff. There's other categories, but I'm not gonna go through this part just because it gets a little bit more personal, I think, and also because there's just so much and I've already recorded a lot for showing you guys this template, so yeah. But you get the idea. It's basically just giving myself a score out of 10 for like each life category. Again, something very valuable, I think, to see, especially if you do it every year and you can compare your own writings like year to year. So yeah, that summarizes the reflect portion of the Notion template. And then if we go back to the main page, getting onto the reset portion, of course, we start off with another quote. It says, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always be who you always were. Pretty reminiscent of the first quote about like, if you think the same, then your life will be the same. We see the same themes reappearing over and over again, once again. There's also a journaling section for this part of the template. And I'm gonna stop talking so much about everything because this video is gonna be so long. Uh, yeah, so a few journaling questions for the reset section. This is more of like, starting to build that idea of how you want to move into the new year so like who do you want to be this year how do you want to feel this year i think that's a really important question because it's not necessarily about like what tangible things you want but more so like i mean yeah just how you want to feel and i think that's really valuable because it kind of allows you to like let go of these like certain visions of like how your life needs to be like you can kind of let go of that and be like okay how do i want to feel it doesn't matter how it comes to me i just know that i want to feel you know energized inspired abundant whatever so i like that question what core values do you want to embody this year a lot of these for me were just kind of reflections of my 2023 things that i learned so i guess this is more about like continuing to incorporate those things that i found were really important that i learned again the perfectionism thing comes up accepting your imperfections, realizing your value, standing in your power, health is wealth, understanding you get who you are, not what you want. Again, that quote from earlier on. Yeah, these are the general values I want to step into 2024 with. Generally, again, same things repeating themselves, getting over perfectionism, accepting that I'm a human, accepting myself as I am, and yet continuing to pour into myself, to nourish myself, prioritize my health, physical, mental, spiritual, and not diminishing my value like remembering the skills and abilities I do have, remembering what I can offer to the world instead of like constantly undercharging, for example. Yeah, that's that question. And then this part's pretty self-explanatory. What habits do you want to continue or incorporate? Your typical stuff, meditation, going to bed early, exercising, drinking water, etc., etc. And then what can you do to reduce friction to these habits? So I wrote like setting up my gym clothes in the mornings, putting uh, time limits on my phone for certain apps like social media and stuff like that, doing meal preps, having my journal on my bedside so that I actually use it, which I do have my journal there right now. So at least one of those things is being incorporated. I also have my phone on do not disturb right now. So I guess you could say I'm kind of incorporating that, but um, yeah, these are things I haven't fully incorporated yet, but I think this is gonna be part of my next video. I'm gonna go through these lists and actually incorporate things like in my technology to do that. Like for example, getting an app where I can limit my amount of time I'm allowed to spend on certain apps and stuff, setting reminders throughout my day for doing certain habits, stuff like that. I'm gonna do that in the next video where I can actually more tangibly incorporate this stuff. And yeah, the next two questions are like the same thing, but like opposite. So like what habits do you want to stop? and what can you do to increase friction to these habits. And I put these images to just kind of reflect again how I want to feel stepping into the new year. And then I have this reset checklist down here, this like physical declutter, digital declutter, self-care thing, 
just things that I want to do at the beginning of every year to feel kind of like a refreshed version of myself. As you can see, I have not checked everything off yet. I did do the self-care thing because that was my first video in this series, so I did that. Um, physical declutter, I did most of that. I still need to actually post the stuff on Poshmark and also donate stuff to the thrift store. And digital declutter, also something I'm gonna be doing in the next video because that's a huge task and that is going to take some time and I will probably also have to do that over the span of a few days because my digital space can get so messy so fast sometimes. Like the amount of pictures of my camera roll, my hard drive, especially with like editing videos, I just throw shit on there and don't think about it. Um, yeah, just like so much. So that is something that still needs to be done. But that's the end of the reset section. And then here we get on to the most exciting part, which is the manifest section of the reset. And I put this cute little like animated icon here, which I really love. And this little picture. I really, I really had fun choosing out like little things like this, like the banners and the icons and like little emojis that I used. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. But yeah, once again, starting out strong with another quote and this is actually a quote that one of you guys left in the comments and i loved it so much that i put it in my template so thank you for that i really really love this quote i'm gonna read it out to you real quick nature loves courage you make the commitment and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles dream the impossible dream and the world will not grind you under it will lift you up this is the trick this is what all these teachers and philosophers who really counted who really touched the alchemical al sorry <laughs> alchemical gold this is what they understood this is the shamanic shamanic dance in the waterfall this is very poetic wow this is how magic is done by hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering it's a feather bed by terence mckenna the last part that's what i loved that's what prompted me to put it into my template by hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering it's a feather bed i love that i love what that embodies just this idea of trusting your intuition trusting your gut going for what you want and worrying about the rest of it later you know just trusting that there is something valuable there for you because why else would you feel it in your gut you know so i really love what that embodies and it's kind of like the nike logo also like just do it just do it stop thinking just do it and i really love that type of intention so to whoever left that comment, thank you so much. This genuinely impacted me and I want you to know that. So I appreciate you very much. And yeah, so let's get into the exciting part of this video. I'm so excited. Okay, so here we get into the actual goal setting and everything. So before getting into like the specifics, I wanted to do a kind of like core values and intentions thing first to set like the feel and the premise for the year before, you know, getting into like the nitty gritty. So again, these are things I've repeated throughout the uh, reset and reflect parts, but just to like reiterate it one more time, my main intentions and core values I want to embody are the health is wealth thing, realizing that I need to be healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually in order to achieve my desires, following your excitement. Again, kind of the same idea of following your intuition, which I also have repeated over here. Um, remembering your value, potential, and ability, progress over perfection, consistency is key, accepting that you're human and imperfect, meeting yourself where you are instead of criticizing yourself. So yeah, I really feel like these six little points fully embody everything I want to remind myself of throughout the year. And I think having it written down here is gonna be very valuable for me so I can like actively reflect on that or remember it. And then I have this picture of this girl who is working from home and I chose to put it in because it's a very aesthetic image, but also she kind of looks a lot like me from like the back of her head. And so, especially because of that, I think it makes it feel like more real to me that like this is something I can achieve of like me working at home for myself, you know? And then here we get into the actual tangible goals and everything. So first we have the SMART goals. This stands for something and I kind of forget. Um, I think it's specific, manageable. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I'll put it on the screen. Basically the way I understand it is it's tangible goals. So things you can actually put a number to, things that you can like actually specifically you know, do certain actions every day and know for a fact that you will get to that number or whatever, for example. So for me, I want to be posting 
36 YouTube videos at least this year. That's three videos per month. So I do struggle to post one video per week. So I thought three videos per month is more realistic than four. Um, also to reach 10K subscribers on YouTube. I just surpassed like 500 and I'm almost at like 550 right now. And if you're watching this, thank you so, so much. Like, I know it's not a huge number, but for me, I only had like a bit over 100 subscribers like a couple months ago. So the fact that I'm almost at 600 pretty much is wild to me. And then in my head, I'm like, oh my God, 600 is almost 1,000. 1,000 is one tenth of 10K, which is my goal here. And so I feel very solid that I can achieve this. So yeah, it's a realistic, oh, that's what the R stands for, realistic. It's a realistic goal. Um, I also think I can surpass that, but I want to be realistic with my goal so I can like check that off as well, you know? So yeah, and I want to pay off all my debts and I've slowly but surely been paying it off. But this year I want to just do it and prioritize it because I know I very easily can. I just haven't been doing it. And then I also want to save $5,000. I want to read six books. Last year, I think I set the goal for myself to read like 12 or 20 or something. I don't know, but I don't read enough. So six, again, more realistic. This year I'm proud of myself because I'm being much more realistic with this stuff. I want to create my website for my pet portrait commissions. Thus far, it's just been kind of like word of mouth stuff, like just kind of through family friends and stuff like that. But I know if I put together a proper website and I, you know, advertise it in local veterinarians and stuff like that, I can get more clients and especially working for myself these days, you know, I gotta be a businesswoman. I gotta get that income and so, that's something that I think I'm gonna try to do that within like this month because it's as simple as setting up the website, uploading the pictures of portraits I've already done and you know, getting started with it. So if you happen to be interested also in a pet portrait commission, I do them quite regularly and I'll link my art Instagram below. My art Instagram is always like below so you can at least see that there if you're interested. And you can contact me on Instagram. Anyways, I want to create six physical products for my Etsy shop. If you don't know, I have an Etsy shop called Daisy Days, always linked below also. Currently, I only have some digital products on there, which are like some angel number prints, and I haven't put as much work into this shop as I have wanted to. So for this year, I'm setting a very small goal for myself to create six physical products because what I do truly love doing is like making things with my hands. I just did the digital products because it's a little bit more accessible and like easy to upload that and not have to figure out the shipping and everything right away. So um, this year I want to get more serious about that and make the physical products. And last, this is the most exciting goal, is I want to move out and get my own apartment. This, again, I'm keeping it open-ended. I'm keeping it vague. It doesn't mean I can't move in with somebody else. I just... 100% want to move out of my parents' home. I don't want to feel like I'm depending on them in any capacity anymore. I want to fully feel like an adult in whichever way it comes to me. I want to move out and be living in an apartment. That would be really cool. And then I have a separate section for my more like vague goals. In the past, I've kind of like thrown all my goals randomly just like onto a sheet of paper. But this year, I think it was good that I separated my tangible goals from my general I guess more so intentions, not as much as goals, but more so intentions, resolutions. I want to incorporate weekly resets, monthly resets as well. Um, I think those will be really beneficial. I have done them in the past. Last year, I maybe did a monthly reset like six times and a weekly reset maybe also like six times. So I kind of have incorporated it in the past, but not as much as I want to. And then I also want to start going to the gym four times per week. I did have a gym membership somewhere, but it was so expensive. And so I stopped going and since I am currently, like I've said multiple times, unemployed and working for myself and just doing like side hustles on freelancing, I haven't yet gotten another gym membership. Also because I do plan on moving in with my mom and she has a gym I can go to for free. So I've kind of been like waiting to move in with her and start going to her gym, which is not a good excuse, but I don't feel that bad about it because, because I do so much dog walking, I'm walking like almost 10 kilometers every day. So at least I'm moving my body. So that is great, but I do really want to get back into weightlifting because it just makes me feel so good. Also a goal for January itself is for me to move into my mom's place. I love living here at my dad's because as you can see, I have my whole room decorated, how I love it and everything. But honestly, with how much the gym impacts me and my mental health and everything, I, moving in with her, even though it's a smaller place, it's going to be so worth it. 
So that's a goal for January. Um, I also want to start doing more meal prepping. I actually have started doing this. So I'm proud of myself. I also want to incorporate a morning and evening routine. I do kind of already have this, but I think the issue with it is I have this like giant list of like only my perfect morning routine and my perfect evening routine. But what I want to do is I want to keep that, but then create a separate routine, which is like, if you're feeling tired, just do this like bare minimum as well. So that I don't feel that pressure every single time to be doing the full routine. And then also want to join yoga classes. This is a very vague goal, but at some point I want to get back into yoga because similarly to the gym, it makes me feel amazing. And I would love to also like kind of meet a community around yoga and everything. Cause I feel I would just meet a lot of like-minded people and I find it to be a very calming and fulfilling activity. So that's it for my annual overarching goals. And then we move on to quarterly goals. So this part I may blur out some stuff because it's a little bit more personal and like more personal finance stuff. But basically what I did is here I laid out quarterly goals. So this is quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. So this way I can check off these four goals every single quarter. And so those goals are to do nine YouTube videos every quarter and to pay a certain amount to my debts and to put a certain amount towards my savings and also to do three no spend weeks every quarter so and honestly i've been really good with it lately like i haven't been feeling the need to spend on anything except for like just my groceries and like necessities so i think this is very realistic for me of course if i want to go above and beyond and do like a no spend month i think i can very realistically do that as well um, but just to set the bar low, I put this as something that I can like check off every single quarter because I'm pretty certain that I can do this. So yeah, I put it for every quarter so that I can check it all off. And then I have some more specialized goals for each quarter as well. These are very vague right now and I'll probably change them as the year goes on and as I get a better feel for kind of like where I'm at and stuff. So I'm not going to go over the quarter two, three, and four ones right now, but at least for quarter one, I want to drive more Uber Eats than I have been doing because with my dog walks, I'll often have like awkward gaps in between them. And so in that awkward time, instead of like sitting in my car or like coming back home to eat something, I can be driving Uber Eats. So I want to be doing that. And I have been doing that already for the first part of this year. So proud of myself for that. And then, yeah, like I mentioned, I want to move into my mom's place. And like I also mentioned, I want to get my pet portrait site up and running. And like I've been talking about throughout this whole video, I want to incorporate my general goals into my technology. So stuff like getting those apps to block myself from certain apps, putting reminders, all of that type of stuff. I also really need to update my business finance sheet um, with Uber Eats and Rover and my commissions and all that. I really should be tracking all of my income, all my expenses and everything. And it's been a few months since I updated that. So I need to do that. And I also have a goal to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of March, I guess it would be. So if you're watching and you're not yet subscribed and you're enjoying the video, then it would mean a lot to me if you wanted to hit the subscribe button and join me for future videos. Anyways, no pressure, no pressure. Um, but yeah, 5,000 subscribers by March. I think this is realistic for me and I'm determined to make it happen. So quarterly goals, we have that broken down that way. And then the last part for the goals and intentions section is I broke down monthly goals as well. So this is not as um, kind of like personalized per month because how am I supposed to know exactly what I wanna do every single month? What I've done here is I've just repeated the same goals for every month that I want to hit. So I wanna do three YouTube videos every month and then I put down more specifically how much I want to be contributing to each savings account, each investment account, to each debt. And so I put that down specifically with like the amounts I want to be doing monthly. And that way I can check it off every single month. And I feel like just having that reward of checking it off every month gives you incentive to keep on going with it. Yeah, like I said, I want to do a no spend week every month. And so I put that in there. And for January, I do have that one personalized goal of moving into my mom's place just because I'm certain that that's something I want to do right now. So yeah, that's January as an example. And then February is literally just the same thing repeated. So you get the idea. Like for every month, I just want to be able to check these things off to, you know, show myself that I'm making progress. So that's the whole goals and intentions part of the manifest section. 
And now we move on to the exciting stuff, to the really exciting stuff. So here is my vision board. If you do choose to download this template, I'm sorry, but I don't have a personalized Canva template or anything like I know some people do when they do notion tours like this, but I think this is pretty self-explanatory. You just need to like go on Canva or you can do it on some random Microsoft app or something. Just make a collage, export it as like a PNG or a JPEG, and then you upload the image into Notion as you normally would. And then you just have your vision board here. So this is my vision board, um, pretty self-explanatory. It just kind of repeats the um, themes of everything I've been talking about. Over here, I've got, you know, this idea of moving into my own apartment. Um, I've got, I photoshopped like my whole subscriber account and everything like that. I am financially free. Credit score, again, this whole section is kind of like the financial independence, you know, being an adult, moving out, that whole thing. I also put images of like, you know, me working from home with the city view, just kind of like putting that first person perspective in my head of like what it would be like to have my own place pretty much. And then I've got my fitness goals. Like I said, I want to get back into weightlifting. Skincare, this girl is as pasty as me. And so I put that in as inspo for like the glass skin look. Cause a lot of the pictures I see on Pinterest are people who have like a nice tan and stuff. And I'm like, that's not me. So this is more realistic and it makes it more believable for me that I can attain this. And then yeah, healthy eating eating, skincare, taking baths and reading, self-care, journaling, meditation. Um, you get the idea. This whole part's like self-care and everything. And I also would love to go camping and just spend more time in nature this year. So that's what those images are. This also is just like the vibe of relaxing, like a relaxed morning kind of. I just want to like feel that more. And then I really love this image. I don't know what it's from, but this girl is just like so in her power and she's like, it's my turn. It's my turn, bitch. And I love that. So I put that there and this is a little bit embarrassing, but I did put like a relationshipy image in here. And I put this one because she kind of looks like me also from like the back of her head. So that's, I tried to like focus on that in this vision board is like people who kind of look like me as well. Like you'll see they all have similar hair colors to me. They kind of look like me from the back of their head. And so I'm like trying to put that image in my head of like, this is the back of my head with this nice purse and this nice shirt, you know? I'm really trying to like implant that vision in my head. And this last image is pretty self-explanatory, just a celebration of reaching 10,000 subscribers and it will happen. It will happen because I put on the vision board. That's how it works, right? You just put the picture on the vision board and then it happens, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If anybody is watching who's like very skeptical of manifestation, law of attraction, vision boards and everything like that, I get it. Trust me, I do. I am not one of those people who believes you just write something down or you put a picture somewhere and then it happens. I know that is not how it works. Um, but I do believe in the power of our own minds. And I think if we plant these seeds enough in our own brains that allow us to believe that we can attain certain things, then it just makes it a lot more likely that we will do that. Because I think the biggest barrier to people achieving their desires is literally just them not believing that they can do it. Like, if you're not going to believe in yourself, nobody's going to do that for you. Like, you need to believe in yourself in order to make things happen. So I think that's the power behind this type of stuff. It's not that I think if I put it on here, it's going to happen. It's like, if I look at this every day and remind myself how I want my life to look and feel, then it will just be that much more clear to me so that I can work towards it more efficiently every day, you know? So that's kind of why I like vision boards. And this year, that's also why I glued it into the back of my journal so that I actually look at it every day. Because like I mentioned last year, I did not do that. And so I didn't look at it at all. And therefore I don't think it had really any impact on me because I literally forgot that it existed. So we are not trying to do that this year. And then the last part of this template is a scripting exercise, which is basically where you just write from the perspective like of your future self as if you already have those things. So like for me, for example, I would write down, I just woke up to over 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. I feel so proud of myself that I worked towards this and it's wild seeing it come to fruition after trying to attract this desire for so long. Like whatever, writing it down in that way as if you already have it. And I did do this, but I did it in my physical journal. So that's why it's not here. But if you decide to download this template, that is where you could just kind of like write about all that stuff. So yeah, I think that part can be really powerful as well, especially if you like step into the feeling of it. That's something that I've heard a lot about and have been learning about this idea of like law of attraction and everything like that. I don't know if I'm gonna explain this very well, but basically the way I understand scripting and everything and like why it works is because 
I've heard it said that the language of the universe, or whatever you want to call it, the language of the universe is that everything is like in this present moment, and there is no idea of like chronological time. Like that's how humans understand things is chronological time, but the language of the universe is supposedly just everything is present and happening at the same time, right? So if you speak it into the universe, like I can't wait to have my own apartment and I am so excited for the day when I get this and this and this, like that's great and you can speak that way. But what is a lot more powerful is if you say like, I am so grateful for the abundance that I feel in my life. I am so grateful for waking up in my own space every day. If you say these things in the present tense, it just gets you more so into that mindset. And if you want to say like, it helps you step into that reality where you do already have those things, you know, because the version of you who has those things, what would they be saying to themselves every day? What would their thoughts be? Their thoughts would be, wow, I'm so grateful that I have 10,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful that I have my own apartment. I'm so grateful that I have a loving community around me. Like that's what that version of yourself would be saying, you know? So that is kind of how I understand it and it might sound woo-woo to some people, but honestly, it makes sense to me and I have a lot of fun with it. This is my mentality with the whole thing of like manifestation and all that. Like even if it's not real, which I believe it is, but even if it's not real, like if it makes you feel good and excited about your life and reaching your goals, then I think it's not hurting anybody, you know? So I hope you found this video inspiring and I hope it inspires you to step more into that mentality of, you know, law of attraction and everything like that instead of making yourself feel delusional for it. And if we are all a bunch of crazies, then just know there's somebody out there just as delusional as you. And that is me. So we're in this together. Um, but seriously, like on a serious note, like I already talked about, I do believe in the actual like psychology of this, which is just like, if you believe you can attain something, you are far more likely to attain that thing. Because there's also, there's this quote by Will Smith, I know he has his controversies, but I found this quote very impactful. Those who believe they can and can't are both usually right. So like the idea is if somebody is constantly saying, oh, I can't get this and this and this, and they're complaining about their current life situation, then they're never going to get that thing. Because if you don't believe that you can get a certain job, for example, then that's going to make you have like 10% less belief in yourself in the interview. And maybe it would have been that extra 10% that got you the job. You know what I mean? So like, I really do think our mentality impacts things that much that it does alter our reality. Whereas if you're somebody who does believe that they can get something, then you go to that interview and you're like, yeah, I can do this. And you're confident in the interview and that confidence is what gets you the job. You know, so like it just actually makes sense to me. That's why I don't think this is a bunch of like woo woo stuff. I think this is just psychology. So yeah, if you're somebody watching who either believes in this stuff already or who doesn't and you're skeptical, I hope that that is something that brings some clarity to you for maybe why this could be a helpful tool for you as well. But yeah, that's my tangent on all of that. Um, but that is everything for my Notion template. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed walking through this whole reset, reflect, manifest thing with me. Um, if you already have your goals and intentions and everything set for the new year, then I am proud of you. I'm happy for you. Um, but if you're somebody else like me who's a little bit behind on this stuff, we're in it together and it's okay. It doesn't make the goals in anything that we're setting any less valuable just because we're setting it a little bit later into the year. And if anything, I think it possibly holds more power because these intentions are being set because we actually want them, not just because of the pressure of the new year. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's better to be doing this and taking time with it and making it how we actually want it instead of just doing it before January 1st because we feel rushed to do so because everybody else is doing that. So yeah. Like I said, this template will be available for download in the description for free. I know it's nothing too fancy or anything, but this is my first Notion template where I've actually put like a decent amount of time and effort into it to make it very aesthetic and enjoyable to use and everything. So if anybody does download this, I hope you find it helpful and I hope you're excited to use it. And yeah, I guess that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you had fun. I know I did, I just get so excited going over all this stuff like it's so satisfying first of all looking at the previous year and being like okay wow i did make progress like it's really important to acknowledge that i think because i think it's very easy to not acknowledge your accomplishments to not acknowledge your progress so i think it's a really wonderful feeling to do so to actually reflect on that 
and the whole reset and everything has felt amazing as well and I get really excited as you've seen about the whole like manifest part of it or the goals and intention setting and all that even though it may be a little bit overhyped sometimes I think there's no shame in getting excited over it because it is fun to think about you know your dream life and to think about the possibility of things and yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So anyways, that is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye.